Frankie, over here on your right. How you doing, Frankie? Good, how are you? Good, good. Does it feel great to kind of have this become like a full circle moment here? You know, there's this this might be your last fight. You had your first fight over in the Bronx, you know, back in the, the bad old days when it wasn't actually legal here. You know, like, is there is there kind of symmetry here? No, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, 17 years ago, driving up here and, uh, and, and fighting some guy with no rules fight, headbutt the guy. And they get to finish it at the you know the most famous arena in the world is uh, is definitely full circle. You made sixty bucks off that fight, correct? One sixty. I got ten dollars for every person that bought a ticket, so I had sixteen people in the crowd. What did you do with that money? Oh man, I don't know. I probably bought some beer or something like that. <laughs> what do you do after this one? Uh, go home and hang out with my family. You know, have a cheeseburger. What, what do you get out of cheeseburger? First off, what what are we looking at here? I mean, I, I, I'm I'm down with try anything, but uh, you know, the classic is just you know some just pickles and mustard and cheese and ketchup. I'm good to go. How many people are coming out to this fight? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm having a bunch, but uh, you know, the people that that a lot of people that were in that in the crowd in, in that Bronx fight will, will also be in the crowd here. That, that's that's what means more. And when you look back, kind of you know, at, at the body of work you've had, you know, what do you what do you take away with you when that day comes, where where it is in the past? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm proud. I look back and, I, and I'm proud of what, how I approach this game, um, how I prepare for everything, how I represented myself, represented my team, my family. I'm definitely uh, all good things. Thank you, right here. Uh, what what was your reaction when they, Chris's name was presented to you? A lot of people assume that maybe you'd get like someone like Dominic Cruz or something like that on your way out. But when they presented Chris Gutierrez, did you have any feelings about it? It didn't matter to me. You know, uh, I remember when they were trying to figure out opponents. I told Mark and Ali, I said, I don't care who it is. You don't just tell me who I'm fighting, and that was it. The the opponent's a byproduct of this for me at this point. So when, when after you signed the contract and everything, you went back and watched his fights. Did anything stand out to you about him? Besides, obviously, he has the, the big leg kicks and everything. But what do you make of his skill set? Yeah, he's unpredictable, a little, a little unorthodox, and uh, I mean, he's on he's on a streak. I think a seven fight win streak. So his confidence is going to be through the roof, and he knows he's got a great opportunity at, at hand. Well, looking at his career, he made his debut, and you had already dropped back to featherweight. Like your lightweight days were behind you, and he made his pro debut. So when did Chris actually get on your radar as a fighter? Like eight weeks ago. <laughs> uh, and I've been asking every, all the fighters here about, like, this might be your last fight and everything, and they are all have, like, glowing things to say, like, it's an honor just to be on this card with you. They all talk about your Gray Maynard fights. Moicano, like, talked a lot about your Sean Shirk fight. So uh, when you're seeing all these fighters, are they coming up to you and talking to you? Because they all seem to be just massive fans of you. Yeah, no, I'm definitely getting a lot of love, and uh, that's awesome because I'm, I mean, I'm fans of all these guys. You know, I sit on a couch every Saturday night, and watch these guys put on these amazing performances. Our sports in in good hands. Did you have any conversations with your kids before this fight, or did you make that decision like this is going to be my last fight, regardless of what they say? No, we talked about it. You know, uh, my 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 sons are kind of old enough now to get it a little bit, and uh, yeah, they 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 were definitely part of the process. And finally, uh, unrelated to this fight, uh, do you have any thoughts on the main event between Israel and Alex? Uh, I'm just excited to see it pan out, you know. Uh, obviously, I'm focused on my fight, but uh, it'll be nice that they're after me and I get to really chill and watch it out. Frankie, can you say with, you know, definitive statement that this will be the last fight, or do you leave anything open to the future? This is my last UFC fight, MMA fight, for sure. Um, I'm most likely 100% is my last fight, but if like there's a some boxing, maybe Pacquiao wants to do an exhibition. I know he's doing exhibitions now. I could be open to something crazy like that, but it have to be a you know a really really good one. Yeah. So how much as you go through this process, you know, sitting up there being like final media day, final weight cut, final walk out to the cage. Can you think about that stuff in the moment, or does that throw you off the task at hand? No, I'm definitely thinking of it. You know, it's 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 all real. Like I, you know, I was like just saying that to my teammates. Like, wow, this is the last. You know, Monday I'll be at Ricardo Almeida's for jiu-jitsu preparing for a fight. Um, but again, the, the fight is the sole focus. Yeah, and how many people of whether it's like fellow fighters, managers, UFC staff have kind of been coming up to you and showing their appreciation behind the scenes? Yeah, you just got here. Yeah, I've been getting on but love, man. Um, feels good, and uh, yeah, it just goes that I've been doing things the right way my whole career. And if this fight goes past a round, you'll be the first fighter in UFC history with eight hours of cage time in there. 
Um, is it kind of remarkable to think that you've spent eight hours of your life, you know, it's in only, that it's octagon? Only, it's only a work day, man. Shit, I did all right for just one work day, <laughs> Just right? one shift, right? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Appreciate it, Frank. Frank, you just said, when did you come to the decision that this would be the last fight? Uh, in, sometime in the summer, summertime. Um, yeah, you know, I had this, after this, my fight last year in the garden, I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Uh, I got a surgery and uh, my body started feeling pretty good. I got some consistent training in. I heard they're coming back to New York in, in November, and I just thought, you know, timing was perfect, and, you know, my, why not finish it here in, in the garden? And we've seen in the past, most recently, like Donald Cerrone retired, but keeping it to themselves and not actually announcing it to anyone until the time. What made you actually want to be vocal about retiring for this one? You know, I, I originally thought I would never retire or, or at least say it. I was just going to walk away. That's kind of how I wanted to do it. I'm not really an attention guy. I'm not really looking for, for you know, any, um, you know, shout outs or anything like that. But uh, this is the way to hold myself accountable. If I say something, I usually stick to it. And when you look at your career, what are the standout, mon standout moments for you? I mean, if, if I got to pick one, it, it's it's winning the title against BJ Penn. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in ath athletics for, you know, since I was 10 years old and always striving to be to be the best at that. And I, I don't think I ever accomplished it until I won that title. So that, that always stands out to me. Any regrets? No regrets. Thank you. Frank, over here. Frank, over here. Uh, when we talk about you 30 years from now telling children and grandchildren about you, what do you hope people say about you? That I put my heart and soul into this. Like when you watch me fight, if someone watches me fight, they're going to say, like, wow, that, that dude fought with 100% heart, you know. Um, I was a big, big Rocky guy growing up, and it's because of his heart, you know. I was a big Evander Holyfield guy because of his heart, and uh, that's how I fight. And, and it's not like I think in the back, oh, I'm going to put a lot of heart into this. It's just who I am. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll be talking to a fighter 20 years from now, and they'll be saying, uh, I'm a big Frank Yeager guy, you know. I so, uh, I think year, two years now, three years from now, we'll be calling you uh, Hall of Famer. Who would, in, who would induct you? Um, I don't know. I have to think about that. I have to think about that. I got a lot of great people around me. And, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Get back to me on that one. Yeah. Frankie Backsteiner here. Um, first question. <clears throat> Uh, post career, uh, post fighting career, Frank Yeager, what does it look like for you? Are you still going to stick around the sport in some capacity? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going I'm to stay in the sport. Um, you know, I, I love this way too much. You know, um, I, I plan on opening a, a gym in my in my hometown. I plan on probably help even getting into the managerial side of things. I think I can help this next generation in, in many different ways. So uh, I'm not going anywhere. And the uh, second one, any fights that you did, never got made throughout your career. I mean, you fought across three weight divisions over two decades, three decades now. Um, any fights that you wish you got made, that you wish you had that never got made? Uh, you know, I, I, not really. You know, um, I, they asked me who, I never call anybody out unless they had the title, you know, um, but they asked me who I'd wanted to fight for this last fight, and I, I mentioned Dominic Cruz just because the trajectory we were on. And, uh, he was a champion when I was a champion. I thought that could have been cool, but it didn't pan out, and uh, you know, I'm okay with that. Frankie, back here. Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Frankie, um, you mentioned before you've been thinking about this is my last time going to Ricardo's on a Monday. When you're backstage and Biggie kicks in and you run out to that cage, have you thought about that emotion or what you'll, what you'll be going through your mind at that point? Yeah, you know, I was even thinking, man, maybe I won't, maybe I'll walk out, but uh, I hope my kid and dude. I'm not going to be able to help myself. <laughs> Um, speaking of so many people, one word that comes up for you is legend. And the second word is icon. It seems to be the two biggest words that uh, are mentioned. You hear that. What, what goes through your mind when you hear that? It kind of blows me away. Um, like I said, I'm not this outlandish guy that's, you know, talking cocky or anything like that. I'm kind of pretty, you know, to myself. And uh, when I people say that to me, it almost, it almost makes me feel uncomfortable, to be honest. You know, because uh, I'm just... The same person I was always, and uh, I don't. I did this for 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 me, not for. I did this for accolades, I guess, glory, I guess, but not for for from it, uh, acceptance from anybody else. Has it been hard for you, knowing this is your last fight, to get motivated and step and go through training and go through all, 
you know, those mornings when you wake up and your body's aching and you're hurting, especially after surgery. How how'd you push through that for this fight? I think it's been easier, right? honestly. Knowing it's going to be the last time I get to do this. You know, I, 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 I'm going to miss this for sure. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, I could do this longer. I could do this longer. I could still beat the best guys longer. But now's the time. What is, uh, how did Mark Henry take the news when you told him? Uh, I think he kind of figured it was coming, you know. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's, he's a little bummed, I'm sure. Uh, and just finally, um, you've been in this game for so long. You've been through so many different iterations and eras of UFC. Yet almost you, rarely, if ever, was there a misstep for you. you know, almost no negative headlines most of the time. You know, you've got your 50 uh, positive test jacket and stuff. How did you pull that off in the 15 years? Just being myself and having good people around me. I've always had, uh, like I said, the same people around me. Uh, I'm no Hollywood type guy. You know what I mean? I'm just a kid from Jersey Shore. Thank you. Frank, you're back at the back here. Um, uh, it, it, what happens if you go out there and steamroll this guy in like one round? Do you think there's any way that you sort of have like a a moment in the cage where you're like, you know what, I'm actually going to stick around for one more if you, if this one, you know, goes your way very quickly on, on Saturday night. I'm not fucking leaving. No. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. Uh, nah, you know, I, I made my mind. I made my mind up, you know. Um, yeah. This is it. People were asking, you know, about regrets or fights that weren't made. I mean, the one that does stick out is, like, particularly around the time you would have fought, you know, Chad Mendes or Josie Aldo was that you and Conor McGregor always kind of had something. Conor has said he regrets that fight maybe not happening do you, is that one that you kind of maybe wish that that had been able to, to happen even at this stage of your careers yeah no uh, that that would have been a, a good one absolutely uh obviously with the with the paycheck it comes with it um but you know i mean connor is he's transcended you know the sport to, to the mainstream more than any other fighter and uh, to be able to set fought him would have been cool but again i got no regrets thank you Thank you. One more in front of you. Uh, when Roxanne retired, she joked that since this would be her last fight, she's just going to pull out everything that she never got to do in a fight because she would always have to like worry about the next fight. Is there anything that you've never thrown or done in a fight that you're like, forget, like, F it, I'll just do it right now? Oh, I don't know, man. What, what is that? What is the, uh, the gay she do? That thun, thun, oh, the rolling thunder? Rolling thunder? That'd be pretty wild. I don't think you're going to see it, though. <laughs> Frankie, right over here. What's going on? Stan the Man from Menace and the Man with Dennis Bermudez. We've had you on the show before for some laughs. Yes, yes. And I don't know if you remember, I told you, I was in the building that fateful day in 2005 when you fought my friend, my training partner, Eric Uresk, and in walked this guy who we were like, we don't know who this kid is. All they said, he's a wrestler from Clarion. Within four minutes, we knew that kid's ready for the UFC. That was the first thing Eric Uresk said after the fight was he sat there and was like, wow, I think I just fought a UFC guy. And then, sure enough, you became Frankie Yeager. So, full circle coming to now, like, I don't even know if I have a question. I just want to say thank you and think of all the guys like Dennis Bermudez, Chris Wade, Ryan LaFlair, all these guys, like, idolized you or looked up to you. And you basically set the path for a lot of the East Coast guys. So, thank you for that. No, nah, yeah, man, I love it. I love being an influence on these guys, especially the East Coast guys. You know, we're kind of all cut from the same cloth. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what it's all about. Oh, and even, th that could be my question, just all the guys you've inspired. Uh, you know, Gregor Gillespie used to run with your picture on the treadmill. He used to have your picture in front of him while he ran on the treadmill. So you've motivated endless guys. So is that something that you think is going to be the next step for you, just getting into the coaching, or do you think you hang it up completely when you're done? No, I'll definitely get into the coaching. Uh, I feel like I have too much to give, you know. Um, not many people, I mean, no one's been in there longer than me, and uh I feel like I got a lot to share, a lot to help people with. But thank you for putting it on for us, Frank. Thank you, brother. Frankie, one question for you over here. I've spoken with, let's see, Dante Rivera, Tom DeBlas, uh, Ricardo Almeida briefly. You've been such a bright light for everybody in New Jersey in the fight community, whether it's the school owners, trainers, students, journalists, even, who have been some of your favorite people that have left an impression on you or made an impact on you from Jersey? Yeah, I mean, the, the Dante Rivera, Tom the Blast, you know, obviously Ricardo Almeida, Henzo Gracie, um, my guys in the back, Steve Rivera, Chris Gore, Mark Henry, 
Um, I mean, all, yeah, all those guys, Frankie Perez, a lot, lot of people, Eddie Alvarez, a lot, a lot of those guys that that we kind of all started together, you know, really, uh, really made this special. I mean, that that that's that's the the best byproduct of all this is, is the people that you meet in this journey and. Uh, even I got like Russian f friends that 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 are like brothers to me, and uh, Brazilian friends that are brothers to me. So yeah, this is uh, this is the best part of uh, of the game. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it.